does. The Trade Site U.S. Stocks, Futures, and Forex Market Preview for the week beginning Sunday the 11th of June, 2023, ending Friday the 16th. That will be uh, triple options, expiration options, futures, and uh, commodities all expiring on Friday. That means we should get an unraveling move maybe on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, we'll see what that uh, that looks like, obviously. But uh, uh, interesting. We don't have any Fed announcements or anything like that. So let's start by looking at the numbers, and then we'll talk about the data that's coming out during the week. So here's the dollar index daily chart. Uh, hasn't really gone anywhere. I had a couple days without triggers this week. We did have a nice winter. Well, a winter anyways later in the week. Um, this is the pound dollar. Um, you know, kind of just near the high is the euro dollar, the inverse of the dollar index. Generally speaking, been flat for a while. The pound yen at all-time highs. Here's the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market. Futures form swept highs for the last eight months. Every day, although it's flat all week until then, obviously, uh, four days in a row with nothing going on. We did roll our futures contracts from the June to the September, Thursday to Friday, so you know, that usually contains those two days, but uh, it was a pretty flat week, pretty uneventful. Uh, S&P cash, um, you know, not much here either. All week long, NASDAQ 100. Basically closed where it opened for the week. We'll see that in a minute. The Russell 2000 did pop up a bit earlier on in the week. The crude oil numbers closing at 70.17 for the week. Kind of been in this area for a while now. Gold also been dead flat for um, at least a monthish. Uh, here's a look at the Bitcoin. Uh, 25,780 as I do this. Obviously it trades around the clock, so it's ticking away. Uh, by the way, there could be a 13. If we run the highs. You get a 13 sell signal here on the Bitcoin, so be aware of that. TLT, the 20-year bond ETF, not much here. Uh, mortgage rates did go down for the first time in a month this week. The VIX down at 1383. Everybody back in the pool. Everything's fine. There's no issues out there. Advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ closed Friday. It was negative at negative 700, but it was positive a lot of the other days. This week, the trend closes at point. Uh, you know, why is this not showing what it should show? So the... Uh, 10-day moving average is 0.93. That's still above the 0.85 line. That's the blue line. That would be the uh, sell signal in the broad market if we got under uh, that level, obviously. Uh, ES intraweek action, you can see, again, Monday kind of a, a flat opening and went up and back down and closed a little negative. Tuesday gap down, went back up. We're even for the week at that point. Wednesday, a uh, little move up and came back down. Thursday, a little move down, came back up. We're even for the week. Friday, Gap up, push higher, come back, because it's the start of the new uh, futures contract. We're on the September contracts now. And uh, so in the end, we gained a very small amount for the week. NASDAQ 100 lost a couple points for the week. Um, so NASDAQ's been a little bit weaker, and it is what it is. Uh, in terms of some of the key stocks, here's Apple near the highs. Amazon didn't make anything new this week. Amazon did make new highs at one point this week, but came back down a bit. Meta uh, was at new highs earlier in the week. Google made new highs earlier in the week. Goldman Sachs, uh, not much here. Netflix gapped up and made new highs. Tesla made new highs. Nvidia has been holding up near the highs. Zoom, uh, not much here. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a lot to say about the market. It, it, you know, it feels weird, right? I mean, it doesn't seem quite right. That VIX reading is kind of disturbing. Uh, in terms of economic data coming out this week, we've got uh, Canada's on bank holiday on Monday. No U.S. data on Monday. Tuesday, U.S. has flash manufacturing and services PMI numbers at 945. Uh, Richmond Manufacturing Index and new home sales at 10. Uh, that's it. New Zealand has a bunch of numbers, including their rate announcement going into Wednesday. Uh, CPI out of the U.K. Wednesday. U.S. has crude oil inventories in the minutes from the last Fed meeting on Wednesday. Thursday, uh, preliminary GDP. That's the second look at GDP at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Initial and continuing jobless claims. At 8:30, um, pending home sales at 10. Natty Gas at 10:30. Tokyo has their core CPI that night, and then Friday a lot of data here. None of it huge, but core PC price index, durable goods, goods trade balance, personal income and spending, preliminary wholesale inventories, and revised University of Michigan sentiment. So there's a bunch coming out uh, on Friday, but other than that, keep in mind that somewhere we should get the uh, options unravel for the quarter, and then we've got the uh, options expiration on Friday, which is usually dead. Um, also keep in mind that the following Monday, June 19th, is a bank holiday for June 19th. Um, they added that last year, I believe. So um, while the stock market will be open, the banks will be closed, and that tends to slow the market down. And then we've got a straight run uh, for the rest of that week and the week after. And then you've got 
usually the worst week of summer, which is the 4th of July week, especially when 4th of July is not on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. In this case, it's on a Tuesday. So Monday is going to be a full day. That will be completely uneventful. Tuesday, we're closed, and people will be gone. So most people just take that whole week off, but we'll see what we get. Charts as usual brought to you by Ninja Trader. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading week.